Welcome to Midlife Customs at Craig's Garage. In this video, I narrow my first 9 inch housing. If you like working on cars and watching DIY videos, then you should hit the subscribe button because that is what I post on this channel. Please take a quick minute to read this disclaimer. I am not a professional, nor do I claim to be. In this video, I narrow my first 9 inch housing. One of the first things I did was go ahead and uh, clean the housing around where the third member goes in, scrape off all the old gasket and sealant and just make sure I had a nice surface for when I was putting up the third member for all the measurements. The next thing I did was realize it is not cheap to work on 9 inch rear ends. One of the first tools I wound up getting and needed was this ICT wishbone slash narrowing tool used to get all your measurements for narrowing the housing. It has a pinion center line slot which is used to measure off of where the pinion center would be located at. It also has a slot to mark and cut the axles after you've narrowed it and mocked everything up. In one of my upcoming videos, I'll show exactly how I use that. And I will add a link to this tool and all the other tools I use in this video in the description down below. One of the other tools I picked up was a narrowing kit from Leadmine Products. In this kit, you'll get a pair of house end bushings which are reversible. One side is 3.15 inch and on the other side is 2.835 inch. You'll also get a pair of locking rings to hold the bushing ends on the one and a quarter inch shaft, which is used to keep everything in line. They just secure down with an Allen wrench, shown here. And lastly, one pair of bushings for the differential case. This goes into the bearing slot in the middle, and that measures at 2.891 inch. There are several different bearing sizes for 9 inches, so you need to know all your bearing sizes before you order the kit. Now, it does take a 1 and a quarter inch shaft, and I bought mine locally, but you can find kits that it comes with which are a lot more expensive. That's the reason why I got mine locally. I picked up a brand new set of end caps, which I wound up not using and wound up being the wrong kind for what I wanted because I eventually wanted to put on Explorer disc brakes and I could have just used a whole separate set, but I wound up using the factory ones and I'll show how I dealt with that in a future episode. So like I said, I wound up using the factory end caps because I thought the flanges were a little bit thinner and they just mount up a lot better. The factory ones look like they're actually pushed into the tube a little bit and they have this little ridge. So I wanted to measure and cut behind that. I set the depth at two and three quarters and that looked to work out good. Next thing I did was take a 3 inch wide piece of construction paper and wrapped it around the axle and used some tape. That way it could give me a nice straight line with a marker so that I can cut off the ends. Another thing I had to do was cut off the factory perches so that would leave me a flat surface to be able to mark lines with a piece of angle iron. These lines will allow me to relocate the ends after I shorten the tubes. And I also mark them passenger and drive side. That way I know which caps go on which side. Here's a shot of the caps cut off. And like I said, I cut them off at about two and three quarter inches long. Using the narrowing tool, I just put the tape measure in the pinion center slot and then I'm able to measure towards the driver's side and knowing all the measurements involved, I'm able to mark it at the length I need it to be shortened to. 
After that, I just repeat the same process towards the passenger side, marking my line and then cutting off the end. I left all the measurements out because they all vary on what length you're trying to accomplish individually. I wanted to keep mine close to stock and I also were going to put in cut to fit axles to kind of future proof it that way if I wanted to change it down the line I could. After cutting off the end pieces I used a file to just kind of clean out the inner part of the tubes and just remove all the filings, the extra pieces of metal that were hanging out. Then I did the same thing to the end caps that I cut off. Just wanted to remove all the little pieces of metal that were sticking out. After the ends were all cleaned off, I wanted to round off the edges so that when I was welding it, it would have a lot more to bite to. Shown here. I didn't grind it all the way down. I left about a third flat to butt up against each other. Here's a look at the bearing bushings placed in under the caps. Kind of just want to make sure everything spins freely. I did wind up putting some painter's tape over the middle bushings because they were a little loose and they kind of wanted to slide in and out. After doing that, they worked really good and everything started spinning and operating perfectly. So after setting that up, I put an old gasket on the housing so that the gap would be right holding the center section in. And I just put a couple bolts to hold that in place. Here's the look of it going through the center section. And then what it would look like on the ends. Once again, just making sure everything spins freely before you start welding it up. Here's how it all comes together. So you got the bushing that goes in the end cap and then you got the lock ring holding it on the one and one quarter inch bar. So you got the rounded off ends on the driver's side. You got the lines all straight for lining up the end caps. And you can see how the bushings are nice and flat up against the end caps with the locking ring in place. I also figured I'd use some three inch channels I had left over from when I narrowed an Explorer 8.8, .8, which I plan on doing a video down the line on. It wasn't necessary, but I figured I had them, so why not use them? Then I just took a sec to see how flat and level everything was. After I was happy with how everything looked, it was finally time to start tacking it up. Then I flipped it on the complete other side and put a tack on that. I removed the channels so that I can spin them and basically put a tack like every quarter turn on the housing. What I wound up doing is splitting the difference between that so I basically had a tack every eighth turn around the tube and you can see here everything was still spinning pretty freely. So after getting the driver's side all tacked up I did the exact same thing on the passenger side. Then came the time to fully weld it.
and I was only welding one section at a time. and letting it cool and then coming back and welding another section. And here's a look at the ends, all final welded and ground down. and a bit installed in the Mustang for a test fit. On the next video, I'll be working on pinion angle and the perch location. If you found this video helpful, please hit subscribe and leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.